Now, no matter which vaccine you receive, you may still have lots of questions about the science of figuring out how, to lo how long your immunity lasts and what goes into making a booster. Joining us now to help us unpack it all is Gerald Comision, CEO of Todos Medical. Gerald, the CDC is taking longer to give guidance for Johnson & Johnson vaccine recipients, and there's a lot of uncertainty out there. From your perspective, what do people need to know about these booster shots? Well, I think the first thing that people need to understand is that the two technologies, DNA and mRNA, are really different. You could look at mRNA vaccines as really infiltrators. They're designed very specifically for a specific part of the virus, the uh, spike protein. And so it, you don't get the whole virus, but the protection that you do get is very, very strong initially. Um, that, you know, that does two things. One, it means that you have high levels of antibodies but those antibodies are very specific for the uh, disease, the, the virus for which it was uh, designed. So that virus for which it was designed, the original Wuhan virus, no longer exists. You know, the Delta variant is the virus that exists and that is circulating. And so those vaccines, while they are, do create a very strong immune response, it's, it's much narrower than you would get with a DNA vaccine. And that's what we're seeing vis-a-vis -vis the Johnson & Johnson. With Johnson & Johnson, you're seeing that you get a piece of the whole virus that your body responds to. And so there's a belief that you get a broader immune response. So it's not just to the spike protein, you get B cells and T cells. And because of that, your immunity improves over time. And so that's kind of what we're seeing, those curves are crossing. Let me ask you this. You know, at this point, we've seen so much progress in regards to COVID vaccines for adults. The FDA authorized emergency use for the Pfizer shot in December. Why is the science here moving so fast for adults, but taking so long for kids? Well, I think, you know, what you need to look at with regards to adults is, in fact, the science, you know, is still progressing. What we're finding is that we've given those Pfizer shots, those Moderna shots, probably too close together. In other countries, because they wanted to get more people vaccinated sooner with their first shot, those shots were delayed two and three months. In the U.S., it was, you know, three to four weeks. And as a result of that, the, the dosing schedule, i.e. how many times you tap that immune system to respond, um, really has an impact on the duration of the outcome. And so people may say, you know, why is Pfizer lasting longer in some other part of the world than it is in the U.S.? That's because we dose much closer together. Uh, now, if you extrapolate that to kids now, and we still don't know the dosing, optimal dosing in adults, and there's such variability in kids with regards to their size, their weight, how much they can actually bear and how they respond. And then you look at that vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, what are the outcome in kids versus the outcome in, you know, some of these older populations, then you really have to ask yourself about the risk versus the benefit. So, you know, very on from the beginning of these vaccine development, the idea was we need to protect the most vulnerable first because those are the people that are most at risk of dying, and that's what we've done. Now that we're moving on to kids, we need to be much more precise with the dosing because you could potentially have severe outcomes. And, and we don't know what's going to happen longer term as these kids are developing and whether it's going to impact. So I think, you know, overall, they're making the right move from a public health policy perspective to make sure they get it right. Gerald Comision from Todos Medical. Thank you. Thank you.